decided to volunteer because at the end of the day something like food should not it's not like a luxury it's like a basic human right everyone has the right to be able to eat and to obviously for warmth and for drinks and stuff so for the government to vote against the fact for children to be, have access to meals during half term is just really it's like really poor i'm a mum myself i've got two young children the thought of them not being able to have food breaks my heart Food poverty is on the rise in the UK. The impact of the coronavirus pandemic has caused far too many people to see their working hours cut and their pay packets reduced. For some, this wage was already just barely enough to get by. In June 2020, professional footballer Marcus Rashford took the media by storm when he discussed the food poverty he'd experienced himself as a child. The government had just recently declined to provide free school meals to 1.3 million children during the summer holidays. But by sheer force of will, Rashford led a campaign to get this decision overturned. And, you know, I'm just grateful that, that, he, that, that the Prime Minister did uh, change his decision and, you know, he understood and, um, you know, I spoke to him earlier on today and just thanked him for that. and. Um, yeah, it was, you know, it was a nice conversation to have with him and just that we understood each other. Children went back to school with full bellies and the weeks went on. But by the time the first half term of the school year came around at the end of October, the government decided not to reinstate the Covid food fund. The way to deal with it, we think, is by increasing uh, the, the funds available for universal credit, we put up by about a thousand a year, but also to put more into local councils. We don't want to see children going hungry this winter, this Christmas, uh, certainly not as a result of any inattention by this government, and you're not going to see that. Despite public outcry and more campaigning from Marcus Rashford, on Wednesday the 21st of October, the Free School Meals Bill was presented to Parliament by Labour and was swiftly voted down by the majority of Conservative MPs, leaving hundreds of thousands in difficulty once again. Order. Order. The eyes to the right, 261. The nose to the left, 322. The eyes to the right, 261. The nose to the left, 322. So the nose have it. The nose have it. And that's how quickly it happened. In one swift moment, the state refused to feed vulnerable children in the UK. But in response to this, thousands of local individuals, businesses and groups across the country felt a moral responsibility to address the issue themselves. One of these groups was Rock Point Community. As part of the Rock Point Leisure Enterprise in New Brighton, this branch of the company is run by Shelby Rolfe. Shelby moved into action quickly and gained the support of local people and businesses to feed the children of New Brighton, Wallasey and the Wirral, who had fallen through the gaps. Hi everyone, it is day 7 of 7 of Rockwing Community Kitchen. Today we have cheese and ham pack lunches and we have a scouse. If you'd like it dropped off, just give us a message and we can get one of our volunteers to deliver or just come down to Rockwick Records. We also just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's volunteered, delivered and helped us with the food. Thank you guys! So Rockwing Community is set up by myself and Dan who is the CEO of Rockwing Leisure and we both, as many others within the New Brighton community, have felt that it needed to be a service where we can support, provide, develop and work with our local community with whatever their needs are, whether they be social, economical or educational as well. We set up Rock Point Community Kitchen and we've done that for the full seven days of the half term, 
Monday through to Sunday and we basically we felt it was our drive and need of helping our local community we couldn't just sit back and allow people to go hungry when we can provide we're all local businesses and we have had the help from local businesses and local volunteers as well to be able to feed not only the kids pack lunches but also the adults that are sort of struggling as well hot meals and the, the sort of response that we've had has been absolutely amazing we've fed over 500 children and adults from all different backgrounds. It should be a necessity. Food is not a luxury for anyone, um, especially within England. We are not a third world country. We are a very wealthy country. And to be able to provide hot meals and pack lunches for children and adults should have been a necessity. It was a mistake by the government to, be, to, to not provide the free school meals. But the response of all of the Wirral community has been amazing. There's been hundreds of businesses providing the lunches so that children don't go hungry over the half term. And it's such a, it's such a necessary thing because no one should go hungry. Um, I decided to volunteer, I guess, because I know other people aren't as fortunate. And therefore, I felt that what little I could do, it would be great to sort of get involved in something. So I was looking for an opportunity, I guess, and, and obviously discovered it by seeing things that were going on with Rockwood. Just from a political sense, I think there's been obviously lots of difficult decisions that have to be made through a pandemic. I felt that this was an easy decision and it was continue to provide those um, the free school meals. I just don't understand why they didn't do it. Obviously, it's been well publicised and well covered by the media as well. Um, so a real disappointment in the government. Um, not unusual for me to be disappointed in this government, but yes, that was a real disappointment because it felt like an open goal and it felt like there's something that they should be doing. What right gives them for them to decide that children should eat during the half term? Like I've said, like there's so many people from all lives and backgrounds, especially like a year like this year where we've had where there's been a global pandemic where people haven't um, their lives have changed dramatically through jobs and stuff like that. So why it's kind of like kicking someone when they're down? Do you know what I mean? Like and especially for children as well, it's not a luxury food, it's like a basic necessity. So it's just. It's just not right, it's disgusting. We must have had about 20 to 50 people message each day and the majority of them people messaged all week to have seven days worth of lunches and hot meals, which is really sad and it's absolutely disgraceful that that in 2020 is still a thing, that food poverty is still a huge, massive issue. We've had, a, we've had a few men and the men have said to me, I'm so ashamed of messaging you because I should, I should really be able to provide for my family. But sometimes it's completely out of people's hands and if they've been furloughed or if they've been let go from their job, it is completely out of their hands. And they, as a man, feel like they need to provide for their family and their children and they're not being able to because there is not that support system in place for them so which is why we at Rockbank Community felt it was such a need and so important for us to be able to provide that and help them people in need. These are local businesses have been gutted by previous measures and lots of support and the fact that they, those businesses are the ones that governments potentially rely on is it just feels even more callous I guess. I'd say from my perspective it was just such an easy decision for them to just get right and just say yeah we can continue it. The mechanism was there, they obviously done it over the summer period and I know it took, they, they had to be dragged into that but they had done it and um, so all the mechanisms are there and the, the, how the schools can provide it and um, it just felt a shameful decision if I'm honest. Do they, do they see what, you know, they in, are they in like their little bubble and they, you know, they're not, you know, a lot of poverty is more up the north end as well of the country as opposed down to the south and stuff like that as well. And, and how do you explain to like, so having two children, so having, especially a three year old as well, how would you explain to a three year old that you basically lick your bowl at breakfast because we're not going to have lunch today, but we're going to have tea. Like how do you explain to a child that mummy can't afford for you to have dinner today or there's no way you can get lunch from, it's, it's not. It's just not right, is it? So we've had, um, when I put, I put a post up on social media asking for volunteers, and to be honest, I was a bit nervous that um, I was gonna have to sort of make manifestations and also deliver, but it was the complete opposite. We had over 200 messages of people offering their time for the full week. 
we had um, offers from Morrison's, Moreno Lounge, Habibi and Rock Point Leisure to all make hot food for us, which they've done all week, which has been an absolutely amazing thing as well, because they didn't have to do that either, especially the places like Habibi and Moreno Lounge. They're independent businesses and they've took, took time out of their day where they have made 30, 40, 50 hot meals for our community, which has been absolutely brilliant. I just want to say, it couldn't have been done without the sort of help through donations, through our volunteers, through our local businesses, and it, it was so sort of heartwarming and amazing to see everyone pull together, um, and it's the reason why I took the job at Rockwing Community and the reason why I'm trying to push this forward is that it's it's so amazing when communities can come together and make a difference and as I said we've been able to provide uh, 556 meals hot meals and pack lunches for our local community so it's everyone should be so proud of themselves and everyone should be amazed at the fact that it, this was just sort of a little thing that we were going to do on Friday we've just decided to do it and I think it was the community and our volunteers and everyone that's donated either food, money, donated their time, it's, it, we couldn't have done it without them. Everyone involved in this should be so proud of themselves. Rock Point Community fed over half a thousand hungry people this October. Perhaps those in office could take a leaf out of their book and brush up on their organisational skills. Division, clear the lobby and front bench and whips can go that way. Back benches, please leave the, in the doors behind me. Behind me, this way. Should be going this way. Everybody's not doing it. Honourable members really should be going in the doors behind me. Thank you. I mean, you, you do need to... Thank you.